year ago. But I was studying Chinese before that in uh, university. When I was finishing my, my degree, I felt like, uh, like my Chinese isn't good enough. And um, I think here it's much easier to live as a foreigner, but in general I really like Taiwan. Sometimes we're too open, so people can be offended. Because, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, and it's not usually, it's not intentional, it's just uh, people very, yeah. like, uh, overly friendly. And I think sometimes even the Israelis, like, they mix, like, uh, being too nice, and they're not sure because it's like a business. Is that the biggest culture shock you have when you come here? Um, the food or like the f yeah, the food is very different. Oh, okay. um, but <laughs> I think I, I really like Taiwanese food. You do? Yeah, and I, I, than I, I like Israeli <laughs> food more. <laughs> oh, okay, because I used to um, eat a lot of um, Chinese style mm. food in Israel, but it wasn't the same because when I came here. Um, it, it tastes very different, and there are a lot of things that we don't have. <laughs> it sounds terrible, <laughs> but it's just um, like the spices and oh. ingredients are very different because in Israel we don't even have uh, like seafood, we don't oh, have um, oh, uh, certain types of meat, and uh, yeah, we only have chicken and and uh, beef and uh, and fish no. and fish. Yeah, just. Uh, fish. Some fish. There, there are Not types so of fish here that we don't have because it doesn't <laughs> grow around uh -huh. our area. But mostly, it's mostly seafood that we just don't have at all. Uh -huh. We have like if if someone wants to buy, I think there are some places they can sell, but it's not very common. We heard about Peter Fish. Do you know that? Peter Fish. Yes. That's a store. <laughs> That's the name of the fish. Yeah. When we eat the fish, you yeah. usually. Just uh, cut it because yeah. I mean yeah. some people they they put it on the grill and then you can see the whole fish. But I think uh, at home, my my family they usually when they prepare the fish, they just um, without like, head without head or without the tail. Oh, so it looks okay. very different. So it's oh, just it's body difficult body. to recognize. <laughs> yeah, I think it's difficult for me to recognize a lot of types of food unless it's um. It's very, very common because for me it's just uh, all the fish are the same. <laughs> you don't see the body. <laughs> I think in Taiwan there's so many um, parts of like vegetables and fruits and mm. stuff. I didn't know that, I never saw it in my life. <laughs> really <laughs> like It's much. so diverse here. Uh, like dragon fruit, I think. I yeah, think I never it. saw this and I didn't know it was fruit. I thought it was like uh, <laughs> seafood. <laughs> okay. Because it was very, like, there's like little spots. <laughs> Because uh, Israelis immigrated to Israel many years ago from all around the world, yeah. then um, oh, so we have, have the the core of the foods like Jewish people that live all around the world. They took a lot of elements from the places that they were oh. living at the time. So every person's ancestors they came from a different part of the world, so they have their own food. <laughs> I'm not sure if the translation is correct, but we kind of we call it like um, different. Ethnicities. So, like my parents' um, ancestors came from Bulgaria and Poland. Oh. So their food is more like European stuff. You know, like um, you know, falafel. It's like this ball. It looks like um, meatball. It's like a meatball, but it's not made out of meat. It's made out of um. I know the name in Chinese. I think it's the ajito. Ajito. It's like little peas, and it's like a brown shape. I've seen it here, I'm sure you know. If it's a shawarma, it's more like, um, I think it's jerky meat. Mm. It's a lighter meat, but they're a mixture of all types of, there are oh. a lot of different types, <laughs> but the, they are all put on this big stick and then they just um, scrape it. And I think that's just the way, it's very easy to prepare, so you have the whole meat behind oh, yeah. like, the sore and the um, and the guy that cuts it, they, he just needs to cut every time, like a little piece of meat. <laughs> and in the morning, there's a huge piece of meat, and then after all the day, it's like the meat, like there's nothing left. I think the funny thing is that for me, the most um, uh, bizarre thing was <laughs> when you have to go to um, um, 
丢垃圾。We have, <laughs> <laughs> you have to.、Uh, there's nowhere to throw it, so we have to wait for the、like, uh-huh, because for we're the in music, Taipei.、Right? Yeah, so <laughs> so we have to wait for the for the <laughs> trash. I have to separate the <laughs> recycle. Yeah, you have to recycle a lot.、Oh, okay. So that was really new for me because、uh, in Israel you can a lot of people recycle, but here it's like、um, it's very important for people. Very details, right? Yeah, there's always this uh, like uh, older lady that she always takes care of it. In my, I don't know, in my, in my neighborhood, everyone gives her everything. So she makes, she arranges、so、it. The music, it actually sounds like an ice cream truck. And you also need to have like a special types of bags for each、uh-huh. area. Me and my roommate, we、um, we just saw that all the bags were in a certain color, so we thought we just buy like a regular.、Uh-huh. We ha- the area we used to live was、um, pink.、Mm. pink so we just bought the pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you have to buy the special ones. So we do the the trash.、Um, the guy that works in the trash. He told us, "No, you can't throw it here." <laughs> yeah, it was just so complicated in the beginning because then I moved to a different. When my roommate went back to Israel, I had to move to a different.、Um, Apartment,、mm-hmm. and、um, it wasn't very far from the older one, but it was a different area, so I didn't know when and where. So I waited for to hear the, the sound,、yeah. and when the sound came out, I ran outside and I went after everyone who was, was going. So. so now I know, but <laughs> in the beginning it was very confusing. No, I have a younger brother. He's、um, he's actually in the army now. Some positions you can stay longer if you want. Uh, so he he's doing something related to、uh, computers, like programming.、Um, so in certain positions that the army is interested in, so they ask him to stay. He's just working there now.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he still wears the uniform and everything. So I I make fun of him all the time. Like,、uh, how do you how do you like it? Like <laughs> like wearing the uniform every day for like. Almost、uh, six years he's supposed、oh, to be there.、Oh, yeah. Because when I was in the army, I was there for only two years, and I really wanted to just、um, get discharged and do other things. And a lot of other friends that I have that they stayed in, in like they are officers, so they need to stay. They, they're there longer, and、um, they really like it. The people that stay because、uh, it's just a job for them. But I still think that there are a lot of things that in the army it's so different than being. A regular citizen because there's a lot of things that you need to be like everything clean and everything like you have to be shaved and your hair has to be a certain way and I think when you're an officer it's not that strict you're part of like、um, like this organization yeah so、uh, so it's interesting but for some people it's it's the, they make career out of it yeah do you enjoy your time there though while you're serving um. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. It was just like a, a time that I knew it would end. So I knew that after that I need to think what to do and what to study. And I really wanted to to go to university already. So for me, the last year I think when I was in the army, the last year I was thinking about how I wanted to be discharged and I really want to like travel and do a lot of things. When I was discharged.、Um, I went straight to the university、mm-hmm. to study、um, because that's what I really wanted to do.、Mm-hmm. It's like a tradition. We we choose a, like a place in the world that we want to travel for, for a, a, a long time. I mean, depending on the person,、mm-hmm. but a lot of people decide to travel for a few months、um, or even more than that because、mm-hmm. they just、uh, they want to relax and. Like be- before going to the college, some people、um, they do it before or after they're going to college because when we、uh, go to the army, it's when we're eighteen,、yeah. so we just、uh, left high school because we have to do that. So everyone,、um, we know that everyone went somewhere and he has like a different story. I think some people, if we hear that they do certain things and they contribute more, because in the army you can. Get、uh, a position that you can do much more with,、yes. just like I think、uh, anything that you can do. The army chooses for them their、uh, like profession, what what profession、mm-hmm. they will have in the army. But they can also ask to be、um, like a part of something. So you can choose your own unit if you want.
Yeah, if you feel better at certain things, or you already study something, like like my brother, he already studied computers, so that was very specific. But some people they want to be pilots, or uh, it's very difficult. Yeah, a lot of people really want to be pilots, but it's very difficult. I don't really know the numbers, but there's like a big group of people that get chosen, even after they screen a lot of other people, and then after that process, there's still people that that are getting cut mm. and it's really sad for them because they really want to, to do that but at the same time being a pilot is also something that they uh, contribute a lot of years and a lot of effort and I think it's also very difficult so there's only like a few few people and there was uh, there's also women there but only recently um, there were women that became very successful in this mm. field. Do you find it important like to serve in the army for a woman two years, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you yeah. think that influenced you the most? Like if you're serving in the army? Um, like you know you said make you intelligent yeah. and make you I think for everyone they would say that they matured a lot because when you when you start uh, your army service you're only 18. Uh, exactly the age where you you are like mentally you're, you're still growing up mm -hmm. so um, it, in my my position in the army was um, in the recruit center so I saw a lot of um, new soldiers like people that they come in um, citizens and then become soldiers so you see um, that there's there's so much difference um, in uh, the way that they think of things, and um, it makes it makes us more um, mature, and um, we're given a lot of responsibility. Even if sometimes we're not necessarily able to do those things, you know, you can make mistakes, and then um, and then you can you have to be um, accounted for it because you're in the army. You know, you're not. In, in high school anymore, so you can't. You have to um, be um, responsible, and the, your friends can trust you because you know uh, you carry you carry guns, and you have to um, guard sometimes. And sometimes um, you have so much responsibility, and at the same time you can still make mistakes because you're still inexperienced. You know, you don't have a lot of experience. Um, and uh, so it's it's very scary sometimes. And I heard that you said that um, you you can make mistakes, right? But then how yeah. do you kind of solve the problem? Is there anybody who's kind of helping you out <coughs> in the back, or maybe give you guidance um, when you make mistakes? I am pretty sure it's like that in a lot of different armies in the world. But uh, it's built in a way that there's like units yeah. and subunits, yeah. and um, so there's always like. Um, a small group of people that you will work with and then there's someone that is in charge of you but there's always like other people that are in charge of, of them so there's always someone that you can ask and you can you can turn to and there's in the army there is um, um, if you have like um, difficulties like mental difficulties and you're very sad or depressed there's always um, there's um, people that take care of this aspect and there is um, the doctors that are inside, the, the belong to the army. So if you're sick, um, you you don't go to a regular physician. You go to a, like an army, um, uh, a physician that belongs to the army. They uh, are in charge of uh, talking to women also because um, there's also a lot of problems that um, that women might might have like. Feelings and yeah, we always have a lot. Of <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> you have to so, take care of that. Uh, every time I remember, there's always stickers in the army that they tell you like uh, about um, like sexual harassment and stuff like that. Oh. They because um, there's so much power for um, for people that are in charge of you, and I think that there is still much more. Um, male officers than female officers yeah. so a lot of times there is a, a lot of conflict um, if they have a problem if they feel like someone is talking to them and 
like uh, right. make them feel uncomfortable. They try to um, take care of, I don't know if it's that effective, I hope it is. <laughs> I don't know if any other places in the world have so many female soldiers, because females no. have to go the same as mm -hmm. men, so um, so it's a big, it's a big no, part. Even if uh, there's mandatory army, it's usually just for men. Yeah. And in Israel, it's it's for both. Although men have to go for three years and, and, and females have to go for two years. Like I have a friend that she carry uh, like a, a certain gun. Um, that I always looked at it and I thought it looks so scary. Yeah. Uh, but she had to carry it everywhere in her off time, and we would just go and. Uh, and hang out, and, so and she can, he, she can carry it, but her clothes are normal clothes, but she carried <laughs> the gun. So, um, and you see that a lot in Israel because um, there are a lot of people that um, they just carry the gun everywhere. Uh -huh. So you see that, and there's sometimes it's funny. I saw something um, uh, online this once, and I saw a picture of someone at, like at the beach, and she had a gun with her. <laughs> so, so we still might make fun of it, and we think it's really funny. But it's just a part of, you know, yeah. it's just a part of uh, life. Are you all like trained to be alert? Like, yeah, it's kind of something that, that, that's what they're supposed to train you when you're uh, in a boot camp. They want to uh, make you more aware of certain situations. In Israel, you can't really have, um, like, leave your bag unattended in the middle of a crowd. It's not, if you see a bag like that, then people get worried and they immediately call someone mm -hmm. to check if there's a bomb or something. Mm -hmm. Years ago, that uh, people would just leave bags like that and it will explode. It was mm -hmm. just a terrorist attack. Yeah. But so uh, people are more aware of it now. I saw a lot of places in the world that people, when they queue, they put their stuff like yeah. uh, in a queue and they just sit. And in this, and when I came here, I thought it's so weird it's like, <laughs> because um, because if you just leave it unintended, I think um, people will get well, what is that? You get suspicious. Do you find it like safer in Taiwan than in Israel? Yeah, much safer. <laughs> Uh, you can see a lot of weird things happen, but people people are very relaxed about it. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, like a real threat. It could be just someone being weird. <laughs> you know, like someone just being weird. But in Israel, if someone is being weird, everyone take like uh, stay away from him suspicious. because yeah, because they think he's he's too suspicious and who knows, you know, what he he's about to do. So they just stay away. A lot of terrorists. They um, just take knives and they just run across the street and they, they just stab you. So you can't really protect yourself. But a few years ago it used to be, um, and it's it's still a threat, but it used to be more uh, prominent, like um, mm -hmm. um, uh, kidnapping of soldiers. Um, when you go to the army, it's, it's very important for them to teach you to defend yourself. If someone tries to take your weapon, they like just steal your weapon, mm -hmm. Um, or just uh, grab you and put you in your truck and take you away. Uh, so you need to know how to be prepared for that. And I remember when I was in the army, I was actually um, stationed very close to my to the center of Tel Aviv. As to, so it was close to home, so it wasn't a dangerous place. But I was waiting uh, for the bus, like a bus station, and um, and there was. Uh, is someone very suspicious, and uh, it was very late at night. So, um, so I remember I called someone, and he came and he they talked to him. I, I don't know what happened in the end because I had to go, but they they made sure that it it was uh, it was yeah. clear. And I heard a lot of stories about mm -hmm. yeah about a lot of people that they just stood around the base and tried to look inside and a lot of stuff like that. And I heard that all. Uh, like from the reports, is more saying that um, just uh, in a family wise and then in the like school environment, they kind of teach you to think and to like be challenging with the questions and the environment. Yeah. Do you find it true? They're actually trying to change the education system all the time, but right now I think that there is um, try to get good grades rather than actually understand what we're studying. We are trying to be prepared for finals and um, 
so that we can get good grades and then we can get accepted to the university. But then in, in, along the way, we forget a lot of things. Like after you finish high school and you ask a lot of um, former students, what did you study? What do you remember? Stuff like that. And I think a lot of people forget a lot of yeah. stuff that they studied. The way we study, it's not, um, it's not a good way, I think. When I was studying for the finals, uh, I was so stressed to just um, be good at everything and get great grades. In high school, we have a government mm -hmm. test for each subject. If you fail those things, you have to to do everything over again. So no one wants to do that. And everyone works really hard and study a lot of things by heart and memory. And that's what, how a lot of people, when I was a student, a lot of people did that. But in my high school, you could choose your major yeah. in a way that uh, you could choose like one or two majors and it was very like professional. I was actually in architecture studies for a while and so it was very uh, like professional so you can help you find something that you like mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a good thing and I think that they need to to implement that more because a lot of high schools don't have that mm -hmm. I think uh, my grandparents were more religious uh, than me but uh, it was never something that um, that they put big emphasis on mm -hmm. so when I grew up um, it was something that um, we obviously all identify as Jewish people, but we don't identify as uh, religious. Um, and some people, they grew, they grow up into a family where those values are the most important. So they just, uh, they keep living with this lifestyle unless they want to change it. Some people, um, they decide to become less uh, religious or more, more strict. And some people, um, even from those small communities, that are very strict. And it's actually a very, very big transition. And not a lot of people from those communities support it because it, they're very close. So they don't really watch TV, and they don't, um, and they dress in a certain way that's very modest. And when you leave those communities and you start to become uh, less strict, then they don't accept it. And um, and sometimes those people they end up being very uh, they're, they're alone because all their family is in this community, and there are certain groups like organizations now that they help those people and they give them homes and they take care of them. It's a huge transition because they have to completely change their whole lifestyle, and it usually comes from just they want to to change their life. But sometimes whole families do that. Mm -hmm. and what about your family? Do they like teach you better things and then like some of um, the aspects maybe from the Bible or? Uh, yes and no because um, um, there are a lot of things from the Bible that are um, like ethical um, guidance mm -hmm. because um, I think in, in Chinese culture there's similar things too because there are a lot of stories that are from history but they're also um, something that you take message from yeah. and um, and you apply it to your everyday life like um, yeah. there's this saying I don't really know how to um, uh, translate it but it means um, um, that you're supposed to love your fellow people yeah. like whatever whatever that person is like you love yourself mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that this sense is like a phrase that we we use and we, we we use every day or we use when we write things and it comes from the Bible and we use a lot of stuff that originally comes from the Bible but we um, see it like as, um, as a way of life and the way that we use those as values so a lot of things that we adapt to the way that it is today mm -hmm. stuff that we need to do so you kind of just import, implement the, like, the teachings from the Bible so they really Yeah, we, we use it a lot. And if we want you to use this one term to describe your country as the conclusion today, <laughs> <laughs> what um, term or maybe what word would you use to describe um, Israel? <laughs> I think uh, maybe the word authentic. Because, uh, you know, like 
like very real and original because um, Israel today, if I would want you to tell other people about it, I think it's a mixture of both history and, um, and culture and, um, and tradition, but it's also mixed with um, modern lifestyle and everything is also very fast and um, yeah. a lot of innovations and a lot of technology that does originate in Israel. So it is very different, but it's like a combination of both. So, uh, so because a lot of people, the way that they see Israel is only the tradition and only those things, mm -hmm. but it's uh, very different because it's a combination of those things. And it still exists, and you can when you go to in the streets, you can see everything. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's in Jerusalem, it's very uh, um, traditional and it has its own ways. But if you go to Tel Aviv, for example, or other cities, mm -hmm. it's very um, new and modern. Yeah, so it's like a combination.